Welcome, guests and graduates. Welcome to the 2017 Penn Foster graduation. <laughs> my name is uh, Greg Javer. It's my privilege to be here today with you. I'm the manager of employee development at Penn Foster. I'm going to be your host for the day. We're excited, of course, to have you here. I could tell you're excited as well. We're proud to see so many graduates walk the stage today. Before we officially begin, I just want to remind everybody one last time, uh, no food or drink permitted in the theater. Uh, some other things to keep in mind. We've set up a special filter for today's event on Snapchat. If you can access the internet, you can use the filter anywhere in the building, and you can follow Penn Foster on Snapchat at pennfoster.edu. We want to share the graduation excitement with as many people as possible, so if you're posting any videos or photos of the day, again, if you can get on the internet to your social media pages, make sure you use hashtag PFProud. You can also use hashtag PFGrad2017. If you have any friends or family who couldn't attend, you can also let them know that we'll be streaming the ceremony live on the Penn, uh, Penn Foster Facebook page. Web address for that is facebook.com forward slash Penn Foster Education. We've got some amazing speakers lined up, and I'd like to welcome the first, our CEO and president at Penn Foster, Frank Britt. Hey, welcome. It's uh, terrific to see this many smiling faces, and uh, I don't know who turned on the air conditioner, but congratulations. That was a good call. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, you know, a day like today is really, for us, very remarkable, and I know it is for you as well. Uh, it's just kind of amazing. We have people from 35 different states here. So for all of you who, uh, who flew and drove, I know I just met a fellow who came in from Georgia uh, just this morning, and uh, it's, it's really a testament. But perhaps as impressively, we have eight countries represented here, including uh, NASA, <laughs> Trinidad, um, El Salvador. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable. So. Uh, thank you for all of you who've made that extra effort to come. I think uh, you'll find it'll be a day that uh, a day worth uh, worth remembering. You know, for us, um, it, it's really a, a privilege to be able to share time with this many good people who've obviously demonstrated that they uh, believe in themselves, they believe in making the world a better place, and they believe in helping to transform their family. So I'd like to spend just a few minutes uh, talking more about that. But before I do. I think it's appropriate, and I think the graduates that I've spoken with would agree with this, that we, we just press pause and, um, and really thank the, the unsung heroes in the room and the unsung heroes of the people who aren't here but they're here in spirit, which are all the people that help the graduates be as successful as they are, whether it's their, their mother, their mentor, their coach, their sibling, uh, their significant other. No one, no one gets to the summit by themselves. So could we just do an applause on behalf of the graduates for everybody? Thank you, uh, thank you for that. Um, so for uh, most of you, you know that Penn Foster has, um, we've been around for kind of a long time, actually, about 127 years to be exact. Uh, so we're not exactly the new guys on, on the block. We're an organization that has, um, for well over 100 years, trying to help people uh, get on a path to a different kind of future and one that really empowers them to take control of their own destiny. And uh, I want you to know, as you go out in the world, there, People will respect the degree, respect your diploma, respect the certification, and they'll respect you for the level of effort it takes. The, the type of school that we have, as you know, is a self-paced school, and so it requires a lot more responsibility on the learner to take responsibility for themselves uh, as opposed to a traditional sit-in-the-classroom kind of model. And we think that employers particularly appreciate people who have that kind of uh, self-discipline and, um, and really can kind of take control of their own destiny. Every year we do this now, and it's, uh, it's, it's really a privilege for me. My team knows that this is actually the highlight of, for, my, for me at least, my year, uh, to have a chance to just spare a little bit of time with uh, folks like all of you. And when we think about the folks who are graduates today, the way we talk about you internally, just so you know, is, uh, is we call you dream chasers, dream chasers. And uh, what dream chasers are, these are people that um, have a bigger idea about themselves, and they see that uh, wherever they are, there's more potential, and they see that education is part of that secret sauce. And so the thing about the, the, the dream chasers are that maybe the big insight you all have, and I think you've all shown this, is you understand the idea of it, really life is a story. Life is a story, and you know that what you're really doing is you're crafting a story that's going to define your life and your future. And um, if you think about stories, whether it's a movie, whether it be a book, 
uh, stories kind of have a similar theme to them. There's an act one where a person decides that maybe there's a different place they can be in their world, maybe there's a different future for their, themselves and their family, and, and like every book and movie, that's how the movie starts. There's a person who wants to change something. Uh, the interesting part, though, of course, is act two. Act two is when not everything goes as planned. There's complications, there's barriers, there's not enough resources, people telling you you can't do something. People say you may not have the right access, you may not have the right talent, it may not be the right zip code. And uh, as you know, because you've kind of lived it, um, that's what happens to a lot of people. A lot of people tell a lot of other people what they can't do. And I think the folks in the front row here today, uh, they may have heard it, but they certainly didn't listen to it. And I think you realize that act two is really when the change happens in the person. The best part, of course, of all the stories, all the books, all the movies, and of course your life is act three. Because it's when all the chaos, all the battles, all the, the burdens, all the people who told you no, that you get to say to them, uh, you know what, the good guy won, the good gal won, justice prevailed, and you persevered. And so what today is really in your story, this is act three. This is act three where you had an idea, you fought through the, the burdens, you fought through the rain, you, you did what you needed to do to win, and you've won today. And so I think it's... Um, it's important to keep thinking about your story because while today is an important milestone for you, it's really just the beginning of the next chapter as you think about where you're going with your life. There's um, a very famous guy you all know, his name is Muhammad Ali. And uh, he of course was an incredible boxer. And uh, he had a very uh, famous quote, which uh, at least I try to live by, and I think apparently many of you do too, which is that impossible is it's just an opinion. It, it's, it's not a fact. And uh, as you probably know, if you know a little about him, he always claimed he was the greatest. He was the greatest. But what people don't know as much about Muhammad Ali is that while he always said he was the greatest, he also said that being great is a decision. You get to make that decision each and every day of your life. And he wasn't saying he was the only one who could be great. He was daring other people to try to be great. And again, the reason we're so impressed by the folks who are graduating today is you embrace the idea that, yeah, it was a dare, you could be great, you will be great, and today is a good example of you proving that. And so no matter how small or how insignificant you think a habit is, like spending that extra 10 minutes a day studying, spending that extra 10 minutes a day making yourself better, if you do enough of those improvements in your habits, you are on a path to being great. Now we have the good pleasure and fortune at Penn Foster to meet a lot of people who've decided to be great. And if you ask the question, what is it that all these folks have in common. What do you find to be the most similar thing across whether you're in our high school, our career school, our college, whether you're from Georgia or Trinidad or New Jersey? What are the things that make those people consistently, consistently successful as they graduate onto the next phase of their life? And what we would say is they've all embraced this idea of something that's a little scary, but, but we call it jumping. What they've essentially done is they've decided when to jump in their life and they've made a jump to a different kind of future. And it turns out that's a very, very smart thing to do because um, jumping is something that trans transforms you. Now, it's important to remember that the reason they call it um, a jump is because jumping is a little bit risky. It's not called a walk. So if you get a little anxiety every now and then, that's what's supposed to happen. It's called a jump. But the thing about people who are jumpers, they understand that you either grow or you shrink. You don't really stand still. You will drift back or you will step forward. And the folks in the front rows today have decided they're gonna step forward and they're gonna be jumpers and they're gonna be the dream chasers, which means they've decided to shift part of their life. They've decided they're gonna take control of their future and they've decided they're willing to make the personal sacrifices and the commitments it takes to be a success. And in your heart, you know that at the end of the day, the reason you're here is because of you. Now, what we find often is that we all have an old life. You know, that life you had last week, last month, last year. And candidly, there are aspects of our old life that were really amazing, but there's also aspects of our old life that actually weren't always good. And I think one of the things that separates the people who take today and really pivot to a stronger future is they realize they may need to make some changes in their life. In fact, many of them already have. They may need to leave some old friends behind that just didn't have the same approach. They may need to change a couple of habits that frankly weren't ones that made you your best self. And perhaps most importantly, have decided that in order to get ahead in life, and this is kind of, a, kind of a strange thing to say, but it's true, the people who go the farthest and do the best are the people who are most focused on helping other people first. If you help other people first, you will go farther, you will be transformed, and you will leave a much more impactful and enduring 
impact on other people. What we believe, and I say this with absolute conviction, is we believe that every person in this room and every person that's helped you was given a gift by God. And the gift was to be remarkable. Be remarkable in your own way. Now, we're all remarkable in different ways. Some of you may be great parents. Some of you may be great at math. Some of you may be great at painting, art, science. It really doesn't matter what you're great at. What matters is you are great at something. And part of why what we try to do at Penn Foster is we try to help people unleash and understand better what their gift is so they can ultimately be all that we think they can be. And so our role is to help you unleash the potential that you all have. And we see people who do that and do that consistently. And when you look at people around you, and you know people you look at, you're like, that guy's doing really well. That gal's doing really well. Her kids are great. She's got good relationships. She's doing well in her job. As we look time and time again, it's always the same thing. It's always the same thing that separates people. It's that they care more about what they're doing. They understand that as they go through the ladder of life, from they go from learning some skills to getting a job to building a career, that they have a higher meaning, and their higher meaning is not about them. It's always about serving other people. And therefore, they do better in their world, they do better in their life, and they help more people. And we believe that all of you have gifts, and that God is willing to give you room to build those gifts. And we can promise you that education is a part of that master plan, but it's only a small part of it. The good news is you're getting a head start because you're here today. And so what we'd like to say to you is, well, today is a day to celebrate, and you will, I'm sure, find the time to celebrate, and I would encourage you to do that. I also wouldn't forget the fact that you are all now something different than you were previously. You are now the power of example. You are the example in your family. You are the example in your community. You are the example amongst your friends of someone who took control of their destiny and changed their life. And don't underestimate that not only are you that example, but you also have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to help other people in doing that. And so that takes us back to this conversation about jumping. If you were to jump off a high surface, perhaps uh, a mountain, the first thing you might suggest before doing so is, I think it'd be a good idea to have a parachute, just in case everything doesn't work out. And we applaud that. We think having parachutes is a good idea. Here's the thing, though. When you jump in life, you know, probably not off of mountains, but you know, in life, if you take those important steps, sometimes the parachute doesn't open right away. Sometimes you're going to bounce into the wall, you're, you're going to fall a little faster than you expected. And you have to expect, as you go off the, the jump, so to speak, that the parachute is there. You have to believe it's there, but when you don't see it right away, you don't have to be overly nervous. But you should have a feeling, and that feeling, I think, can be best described like you're on a roller coaster. You know when you go up that roller coaster and you're getting closer to the top, and you're going closer to the top, and that person you're sitting next to, you look at each other and say, why did we do this again? This really wasn't a good idea, right? That anxiety, like, well, no, it's not going to break. I mean, a thousand people went through it, but maybe this is that one time. And, and so you get into this conversation with yourself about whether you're a genius or a fool because you're about to go off a very high surface and then down at a very fast rate. And that feeling, that anxiety, that is actually how it's supposed to feel. And that's similar to the jumping. The uncertainty you feel when you make jumps in your life are designed to be a little bit, frankly, uncomfortable. It's designed to be disruptive. It's designed to make you feel differently about yourself. But what you find if you take enough jumps over time that you begin to get good at doing the jump. You begin to understand that jumping is actually the secret sauce as well as caring. And as you make more of those jumps, you will live a more abundant life. You will have a different orientation and you will realize you cannot take shortcuts to the top. You have to find the balance that's right in your life to make it work the way it needs to work for you. And so caring and jumping turn out to be really um, essential parts of the secret sauce. But there's a third piece, and you already know this because you already applaud it, which is that if you're really going to go where you want to go, you're not going to go by yourself. You're going to have to go as a team. You're going to have to find the people you have in your life already who are helping you, and you're going to have to find other people. No one gets to the summit walking by themselves. You, know, you might be able to have a best-selling song <laughs> as a soloist, but you are not going to get to where you want to get in your life as a soloist. And so you have to build a team around you who can help you, who believe in you, and have the respect and confidence. We call that ultimate resilience. But resilience isn't just something that lives in one person. Resilience is something that's a collective idea. Resilience is the idea that all of us play a role in helping each other. And we believe that if you believe in the grit and the resilience and you find other people who believe in you, those are the secrets to getting farthest in life and having the best life. The power of caring, 
the power of jumping, and the power of resilience, not just resilience by yourself or for yourself, but resilience as a team. We call it the collective resilience. So in the end, it all comes back to the story, right? The story, it's not that really important. What matters at the end of the story is that you were transformed and that you made the jump as part of it. And what, that's what makes all stories memorable. It's not really what happens in the story, it's what happens to the person. What happens to the character and the actor in the movie, and you are the center of your life story. And so we are very, very proud and very, very pleased to play a very small role in helping you evolve your story. And what we want of each of you is to build a story worth living, worth jumping for, and in the process taking other people with you along the ride. And if you do that, you will live longer, you will be happier, you will shape more lives, and you will be a tremendous success as you are today. Thank you very much. Mr. Britt is always a tough act to follow, so if you would, give, give Frank another round of applause. Thank you. Well, hello again, Penn Foster graduates of 2016 and 2017. Give yourself another round of applause. My name is Mark Slayton, and I'm the SVP of Student Success at Penn Foster. To my esteemed colleagues, including our teachers, school administrators, advocates, volunteers, and all of the awesome people who made this day possible, welcome and thank you. To family and friends, I am brimming with gratitude for all you have done to support your graduate. Selflessly standing by them, serving as mentors, offering encouragement, and making certain they know they are loved and appreciated for who they are today and will be in the future. Because of you, they persevered, overcoming unforeseen hurdles they championed along the way. I'm sure they see you as their heroes, and as I see it, they couldn't be more right. Thank you for all you've done to make this day possible. To our graduates, congratulations. Enjoy this perfect moment, because today, this day, is all about you. It marks the opportunities you've earned by graduating with your diploma or degree. The future you want is yours for the taking. So set your sights high and never relent as you pursue and realize your dreams. As you continue your life's journey, you're going to see a common theme here with Frank, what Frank had just said. Don't fear failure. Embrace it. Learn from it. Draw courage from it and keep moving forward. You must because your future is too important. Trust in yourself and the sacrifices you made to realize this day. Today is a new beginning as you look towards a future filled with promise, adventure, new lessons learned, and ultimately success. Success defined by you. Think about the people you admire most. I'm sure, I'm sure that they failed over and over again. But it made them stronger gave them character and the will to keep coming back more committed than ever. Statistics show that right now in this room, our graduating class will produce a veterinarian, a doctor, a nurse, a CEO, an accountant, and other professions, including a successful business owner, which leads me to a fellow graduate who has an amazing and inspiring story that I would like to share with you now. Vicente Ferrar Martinez traveled from Colombia, South America to join us today. I'm going to get to that in a second. He enrolled with International Correspondence Schools, that's ICS, and that was Prent Foster's previous name. He enrolled in 1948 at the age of 14. Mr. Ferrar would study at night after working 12-hour days. With dedication and drive, he finished his general commercial manager course in 1957 and in 1958 became a certified public accountant. Mr. Far Farrar has since founded a number of companies and currently serves as chairman on a company he founded in association with Adhesives Research Incorporated in Glen Rock, Pennsylvania. He credits much of his career success to studying with ICS more than 60 years ago. 
In September of last year, I had the opportunity to meet Mr. Farrar and his family. He had stopped by our headquarters here in Scranton, and we were able to spend some time touring the facility. We spoke about his experience with ICS and the many businesses he was an integral part of over the years. As an online school, we're always very excited when we have a chance to meet our students in person. We are so lucky to meet and celebrate each of you and your successes today. In 1957, when Mr. Farrar finished his program with us, we didn't have graduation ceremonies. That being the case, we wanted to have Mr. Farrar at this year's commencement to honor his accomplishments and celebrate his graduation from ICS. His determination and dedication serve as an inspiration to us all. Mr. Farrar said that he has ICS in his heart. Here at Penn Foster, we hold students like Mr. Farrar and all of you here in our hearts as well. We could not be more proud of our students past, present, and future. Please join me in a round of applause to celebrate ICS graduate Vicente Farrar Martinez and his life of accomplishment. That was great. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Frank. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Farrar, for uh, sharing with us today, coming here today. We're so happy you can be here. We're happy that all of you can be here, of course, and we're honored to take this time to celebrate success, sharing your accomplishments. Now it's time, though. We're going to be calling each graduate to the stage by name in order of the school they graduated from, starting with our high school graduates. And don't forget, everybody, let's make a lot of noise. We're going to start with our high school graduates, starting with Patrick Acosta Spaulding, a 2016 student ambassador. <laughs> Teresa Adazzi. Alicia Alford. Muslima Ali Dorsey. Jessica Alamond. Kimberly Alvarez. Tiara Bailey. Shanai Barnett. Alexandra Bariga. Megan Beebe. Latoya Bennett. Hannah Bertrand. Kalisha Billy. And he couldn't be with us today. He was deployed to the military. Give a round of applause to Patrick Bosley. Joseph Bazone.
Mary Britton. Maya Brown. Keyshawn Brown. Nicholas Brown. Deontay Narvaez Brown. Barbara Brunden. Laura Lee Berger. Evangelina Calderon. Katie Cantrell. Latanya Janetta Cargo. Trendon Carlin. Jose Luis Carrion. Curly Charles. Israel Colon Jr. Patricia Ann Crawford. Jelena Crosby. Iris Cuba. Maria DeCuna. Latrice Deloach. Emily DeRue. Nicole Dayton. Swanette Diaz. Geneva Dixon. Kara Dixon Bryant. Rashad Donnelly. Tanya Dove. Anna Dines. Alicia Edwards. Miriam E.L. Trudy Foncha. Jason Eugene Fox. Valencia Francis. Joe Germany. Brittany Giardina. Mary Glenn. Sylvia Gooseby. Tyreek Grant. Amy Denise Grant. Emily Green. Nashiki Monique Green. Tamar Green. Victoria Gregory. <laughs> Tiffany Greer. <laughs> Jessica Hahn. <laughs> Muwafag Hassan. Chantel Hayes. Charday Haywood. Anne Marie Hurd.
Daisy Hernandez. Janice Highsmith. Samuel Highnight. Regina Hoke. Megan Horner. Titus Howard. Brianna Huffman. One of our current student ambassador, ambassadors, Triesa Iqbal. Tamara Jackson. Shania Jackson. Julia Johnson. Kendra Joplin. Martha Carrura. Eileen Keith. Jabri Ebony Lynn Kelly. Sarah Khan. Courtney Klein. Garrett Knight. Kelly Kwasnick. Nora LaFontaine. Mariah Lambert. Christian James Lanigan. Genia Liberty. Mackenzie Logan. Fabiana Lopez. Abigail Lemus. Joshua Collymore. Lauren Maiden. Edwin Manfredi. Phoebe Martal. Ava Morrow. Shelby Mauser. Anita McClinton. Alicia McCrary. Dakina McDowell. Jaleel McGilbury. Michael Melendez. Rachel Miner. Regina Mix. Iris Mosley.
Zia Brianna Myrick. Elise Nasser. Betsenia Nieves. Paul Obolonye. Angela Danielle O'Hara. Adrian Pacheco. Brial Payton. Isabella Paleologus. Cole Parks. Lolita Petrova. Ebony Phelps. Erica Pimentel. Sierra Pittman. Aaron Pogazelski. Claudia Poole. Dalen Powers. Shelly Don Prophet. Jennifer Rancier. Felicia Reynolds. Kenneth Reynolds. Justina Rilong. Jonathan Riley. Matthew Riley. Hector Luis Rios. Jalen Rivera. Tanisha Robinson. Lori Rodriguez. Shirley Rudder. Kasten Salazar. Michael Sampson. Chesa Saunders. Jakala Savoy. Holly Shryak. Shatia Simmons. Jacob Simmons. Kaylee Skiles. Sherry Smith. Michelle Renee Smith. Nafisa Snowden. Destiny Soto. Hannah Sparks. Mackenzie Stallworth. Edwin Stella.
Kiara Stewart. Sandra Stone. James W. Stone, Jr. Jacqueline Suarez. Caitlin Taylor. Mercedes Terrell. Robert Thomas. Aaron Thompson. Catherine Thrasher. Erica Tilly. Jadika Tung. Delma Torres. Juan Townsend. Michael Trirodola. Amanda Trirodola. Michelle Velasquez. Trong Bong. Jamie Waite. Lanitha Warren. Trenise Washington. Labrius Watson. Debrea Wilder Oliver, Jada Wiley, Phyllis Williams, Tiaria Williams, Shabar Williams, Francis Nicole Williams. Jamie Lee Yerich, Melanie Nicole Young, Hannah Zioli, Annette Zingaro, Aretha Zogar, Darnell Richards, Cheryl Thompson, Michael Melendez. Kaylee Skiles. Keangela Butler. And Liberty Giania. Everybody, can we get one really, really big, massive round of applause? That's our high school graduates. Now 
we're going to move on to our career graduates, our career school graduates. With a career certificate in business management essentials, Ariana Owens. A career diploma as a teacher aide, Anadina Abando. Career diploma as a paralegal, Danielle Aguirre. Career diploma as an auto repair technician, Iniobong Akpan. Career diploma in physical therapy aid, Jerry Main Andrews. Career diploma as a caterer, Adriana Ariaza. Career Diploma Paralegal, Nora Ashkar. Career Diploma as a Private Investigator, Earl Barrick. A Career Diploma in Hotel and Restaurant Management, Richard Burke. Two career diplomas, pharmacy technician and administrative assistant, assistant to Alma Butalid Kabayan. <laughs> career diploma in medical coding and billing and also one of our current student ambassadors, Louis Cameron. Career Diploma as a Certified Wedding Planner, Virginia Chowmore. <laughs> Career Diploma in Medical Coding and Billing, Lori Mae Dill. <laughs> Career Diploma in Floral Design, Noelle Ellis. Career Diploma in Medical Coding and Billing, Bobette Freeman. Career Diploma as an Administrative Assistant, Zule Fundora. Career Certificate in Pet Grooming, Rachel Gareca. Career Diploma in Medical Coding and Billing, Amanda Hardeman. Career Diploma as a Veterinary Assistant, Katrina Horrocks. Career Diploma in Medical Coding and Billing, Kia Jones. Career Diploma, Auto Repair Technician, Donald Kepler. Career Diploma, Computer Support Technician, Austin Keeper. Career Diploma in Plumbing, Gary King. Career Diploma as an Administrative Assistant, Candy Lapp. Career Diploma in Small Business Management, Janet Lee. Career Diploma in Child Daycare Management, Rosa Angelica Lewis. Career Certificate in Electronic Medical Records, Toya Lofton. Career Diploma as an Interior Decorator, Jumani Mescal. Career Diploma, Medical Administrative Assistant, Betty Morris. Career Diploma, Medical Coding and Billing, M. Sharon Ramirez.
Career Diploma, Medical Coding and Billing, Lizette Ramirez Torres. Career Certificate is a Child Development Associate, Diana Rivera. Career Diploma in Child Daycare Management, Sharon Ross. Career Dipl Diploma in Professional Locksmithing, William R. Stahl. Career Diploma, Medical Coding and Billing, Isaac E. Tolbert, Sr. <laughs> Career Diploma as an HVAC Technician, James White, Jr. Career Diploma in Medical Coding and Billing, Gabrielle Williams. Career Diploma as a Diesel Technician, Emery Donovan. And those are our uh, Career Diploma graduates today. Let's give them all a really big round of applause. Now we're moving on to our college uh, associate's degree candidates. In accounting, Christina Andre. <laughs> Veterinary technician, Tiffany Asbury. Veterinary technician, Tammy Crabb. Early Childhood Education, Alexis Ferguson. <laughs> Veterinary Technician, Jerrica Gad. <laughs> Veterinary Technician, Claire Hottard. <laughs> Marketing, Julia Lee. Veterinary Technician, Ashley Leo. Interior Design, Teresa McClellan. Veterinary Technician, Rhoda Mata. Industrial Electronics and Electrical Technology, Gregory Moyer. Early Childhood Education, Ashley M. Parker. Engineering Technology, Ruben Pedraza. Veterinary Technician, Ana Perez. Human Resources Management, Sandra Stone. Veterinary Technician, Kristen Ulichny. And now our bachelor's degree candidates, Criminal Justice, Don Amor Diaz. Business Management, Holly Askey. Criminal Justice, Harry Parker. Business Management, Tierra Rollins. Criminal Justice, Milton Stevens.
Criminal Justice Nicole Strickland. <laughs> Veterinary Technician Tammy Crabb. And we've got a few more associate's degree. Katrina Thomas. <laughs> High School Diploma Cheryl Thompson. and high school diploma, Keangela Butler. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody. That concludes uh, the awarding of the diplomas and degrees. Uh, let's give it, everybody, give yourselves a great, another big round of applause. I'd like to have a, a very special gentleman join me up on stage. He's already here, but uh, Omar, if you could please stand for a moment. I, I think we've mentioned it a few times today. In fact, I've probably lost count of the number of times that it's been said because it's true. We couldn't be more honored to have the chance each year to witness you, our students, our graduates walk across the stage. At Penn Foster, we're enormously proud of each and every one of you, and we couldn't be more proud to honor a special graduate today, Omar Houghton. Many of you may already know, Omar was Penn Foster's 2016 Graduate of the Year, a title he won with an inspiring essay about what his education meant to him and to his family. We've held the Graduate of the Year contest each year, encouraging students to submit an essay on the student community letting us into their lives and stories. Omar's entry was especially touching to the students who voted for his submission. He enlisted in the California Army National Guard in 2009 and served his country for years. In 2012, after an injury, he returned home. While recovering, he realized that he was going to have to consider a different path forward. I thought, Omar wrote in his winning essay, my chances of a higher education were thrown away. Omar soon enrolled with Penn Foster College. As a veteran, he used his military benefits towards his education. The experience in the military taught him the discipline and perseverance he needed to finish his degree. After 18 months of hard work, Omar owned, earned his associate degree in criminal justice. He currently is, sure, give him a round of applause. He currently uses his degree working uh, for Passport to Learning as a forensic adaptive living skills instructor. He exemplifies the success we hope all of you are able to achieve. He first served his country and now he serves his community with his work. He is without a doubt one of the most hardworking, determined, disciplined students we've had the pleasure of meeting. A truly outstanding individual. Omar, you're our graduate of the year, but we'd also like to present you with a second award today. For 34 years, the Distance Education Accrediting Commission, the DEAC, has celebrated the achievement of graduates and alumni at distance education institutions. Each year, Penn Foster nominates a student whose achievements inspire us. Selection criteria include academic records, as well as the impact of the graduates' contributions to a greater social good and to their chosen profession. This year, that's you, Omar. We'd like to present you with the 2017 DEAC Outstanding Graduate Award. I think your actions in your community, as well as your drive to reach your goals, inspire and motivate all of us. to finally congratulate all the graduates who walked the stage today, any of you who are watching from home uh, on Facebook. All of you are an inspiration and should be so proud of your accomplishments. It's an honor to meet so many of you in one place, and I want to thank you for joining us. Before we end this year's ceremony, I'd like to ask all graduates to please rise. Omar?
Omar is going to lead us in the turning of the tassel. It's a graduation tradition signifying the end of this journey and the beginning of the next. As you move forward with your education and careers, we know you're going to do great things. Congratulations, everybody!